All right, good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, uh, to begin with, I want to apologize for my voice. Uh, I lost it on Sunday, and I haven't managed to find it, so I, I apologize for the raspiness, and I hope it doesn't sound horrible in your, um, in your headset. Um, uh, today on the agenda, um, we've got some, some items we want to discuss. Um, first, I want to welcome everybody, and um, in the room with me today is Terry Center and Linda Blackman and Kathy Lagana. Um, they are assisting me in making sure that um, any of the technical issues that might crop up, that they can manage those and assist with that as need be. Um, on the agenda, we are going to talk about the update schedule, and basically what I mean with that is the change schedule um, and how we're going to process changes through the pilot. Um, and then the change control process itself, um, I want to kind of go over that with everybody briefly. Um, we've had some changes to our webinar dates from what I had published previously, and so I just want to give you the new dates. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time going over the questions and comments that were given to us during the training sessions. Um, we had an excellent um, training last week and, and some follow-up training, which was also very good this week. And we got a, a lot of uh, good questions that, uh, and, and comments, and so we want to go over that a little bit with you guys. And then um, I have some dashboard samples that I have found. Um, just a couple uh, that I think are very interesting to look at. And these dashboard samples are not dashboards that we have done with our data. They belong uh, to some external entities. But I just wanted to present them to you so that um, it's kind of a, some food for thought and um, just, just to see if it sparks some um, imagination and some in interest. And of course, at the end, we'll do a Q&A session. Um, when we get to the Q&A session, we ask that you um, enter your, your questions in through the chat screen. Um, you can actually enter your questions at any time during the webinar, and um, we will just kind of collect them up and answer them at the end. Um, so that's how we're going to proceed. So to begin with, the update schedule during the pilot is basically going to uh, have just three dates. And when I say update schedule, what I mean is if you guys have requested a change to a particular report, um, asked for a new report, um, or if there's an error that we need to correct, um, those changes will be moved into the Bob J system on one of these three dates. And so we're going to um, do everything we can to get as much out there for you during the pilot. And I just wanted to publish these change dates. So um, out, of the, out of the training sessions last week, um, we did have a number of changes that were requested. And we're going to try our best to get as many of those in as possible um, on the 5th. Some of them might take a little bit more time, so they might have to wait until the 15th. So that's kind of how that's going to go. Um, during um, the pilot, we're going to be using sort of an alternative change control process for the pilot report. So we're not using the normal beacon change control for the pilot report um, in, in, certain, in certain circumstances. Um, but we're only accepting a, a, a limited number of changes or a limited type of change, if you will, um, within this alternate uh, change control process. And basically, it's going to be limited to uh, things that are already within the scope of the project. So acceptable changes um, are going to be processed um, in, in the following way. First off, um, changes to the reports that are out there currently um, will be made, if at all feasible. So depending on what the technical challenge is, 
Um, we may or may not be able to do them, but if it's feasible, we will make the changes, any changes that you request. And of course, that's that based on your approval. So one person may ask for a change um, and the rest of the group really doesn't agree with that change. So it's really gonna be um, majority wins um, on any kind of changes to the actual report. The initial, the initial changes are, are, that we've captured came in through the training session. And so we're gonna make those changes um, uh, depending on your approval. Any additional changes, so as you're using the tool through the duration of the pilot, if you notice something that wasn't noticed during training, or if you'd like to have uh, some additional feature or some additional uh, uh, compilation done, you should submit that through a heat ticket or through a, a, a best shared services ticket and make sure you put the subject, subject line of Bob J on the, um, on the ticket. And we will um, gather those and, and uh, distribute the information to the pilot participants, get a vote on it. And if it's feasible and everybody likes it, we will make the change. Um, and there's, that's, so it's really not going through any process internally here, it would be processed through the pilot group. Um, and then the last thing that I wanna talk about is um, if, so the way I see this happening is I'll probably be sending emails out with a list of what's being changed or, or at least a list of what has been requested uh, and I'll be asking for you to comment on whether you approve or disapprove those changes. If I send the email out and nobody says anything or responds to it, then I'm gonna assume everybody agrees and I'm gonna make the change. So that's kind of um, the way that's going to be processed. Now, if you guys have, a, have, a, have an opinion or have some comments about this change control, definitely type those into the chat because I'm interested in your feedback on this process as we go forward. And remember, this is just for the pilot and just for what's within scope of the pilot. So here's some things that, um, that, I, that are included in the pilot, just so we're clear about what does this mean. Um, we can create new reports based on those existing um, BI reports. Remember the little chart that you all have that has the nine reports that we've modeled in uh, business objects in various ways. So if there's new, a new report that you'd like to see that's based on the same data that's within those existing BI reports, we can create it as part of the pilot. Um, we can add additional functionality to any of the existing reports where it's technically feasible. I think during the training, we talked about dashboard uh, quite extensively, and we talked about drill-through capabilities. So there may be uh, some, some good opportunity here to model that. And in order to do a drill-through, we would be actually creating new reports and attaching them to those dashboards. So that's an example of what I mean there. Um, changes to the existing pilot reports are, so, are something that we can do. So if we wanna put new charts and graphs on a report, different summariz summarizations, if we wanna change the format or the, the report default layout, um, we can do all those things. We can change the prompt format and put different prompts or remove prompts um, depending on your feedback on those things. There are some things that we cannot do as part of the pilot, and I wanna go over those just to be clear. We cannot add any additional BI reports to the pilot. So if it was not selected during that initial uh, report list, it's not on that initial report list, we can't do it. Now, I, I say that, and I just want you to remember that the existing report, if you think about them, with the 
D0149 report, we've pretty much got the majority of your OM in that report. And with the B0161, we've got an awful lot of your PA data. And in addition to that, we have B006, which gives you all of your action information. So between those three reports, we've got a lot of coverage across the system. Um, but what we cannot do is go out and add, for instance, B0095, which I know has been requested, not as part of the pilot. Um, those additional reports will come in after we go live and get into the report migration. Um, and I say we can't do it. We could do it, but you'd have to go through the normal change control process for that. And I think time, you know, the, the amount of time we have in the pilot, that makes it fairly unfeasible. Another thing that we cannot do is we can't add data elements that aren't already available in those pilot reports. So the data that's available to you in the pilot is the same data that's available to you in the BI report um, in the existing system through those same reports. If the data is there and available to you there, you'll have it in the pilot, but we can't add anything that's not included already. That would be something that we would have to take through our functional and our security teams, and we just um, really can't we really can't manage that, I don't think, for the pilot itself. Hopefully, though, most of what you're looking for is already available to you in the reports that we've selected. Um, the webinar date, as I mentioned before, has changed a little bit. Um, we, we published the, the original date and then realized um, after we published them that we had some conflicts internally here. So we've just moved the dates around a, a little bit. Um, hopefully we won't have to do that again, but we will definitely let you know ahead of time if we are moving a date. Um, but right now these, I think, are the dates for the remaining webinars. So at this point, I'm going to jump out of the presentation here, and I'm going to open up a document that has all the questions that came in as part of the training so that we can review those together. So on the screen, you should see an Excel spreadsheet where I have captured, and let me just go ahead and expand this a little bit better, because we've got a lot of space, where I have captured um, the questions that have come in um, as part of the training. Now, I'm going to try to scroll down through this um, in a way that hopefully doesn't make you guys dizzy. but as you can see, as I scroll down through this list, there were a lot of questions and a lot of comments. Um, and we really actually are pretty happy with this because that means everybody was engaged. But we have 114, or actually 113. Let me just increase it. Does that make it better? I've had some feedback that it was hard to read. Okay. <clears throat> so we've gotten a lot of feedback, and we're really thrilled, actually, with this. Um, and it will take us some time to process through it. But I did take some time and try to at least take a first pass at what some of the, um, the answers or the resolutions might be to some of the questions. So I'm not going to go through all 113 of these because that would take a very long time. And I'm sure you don't want to hear my voice rasping through all of this. But I do want to cover um, just the items that were brought up as changes or requested changes um, just so that you can get a feel for um, what was asked for. So I'm going to use a little filtering technique here to go in and 
knock this list down a little bit. So on this file, I have listed the type of, of item it was, what the question was, and what our response is going to be. Um, so let's just start at the top. Someone asked us to add a prompt to B00, actually three zeros, B0006, um, so that they could select data by personal area. And so we, we are accepting that and we'll be trying to migrate that in, um, hopefully by the 5th, if not by the 15th. Um, another change that was requested was um, someone asked us to add a table at the end of the crystal report on B006, um, breaking out age range by demographic and separations by demographic. We will also accept that. Um, I think as a follow-on, it looked like to me as they were maybe processing through that thought, they asked that anytime we had a PI, uh, PA crystal report that we go ahead and put some sort of account by demographic and we will um, accept that as well. So we're going to go back and look at our PA based crystal report and make that change um, to any, anything where it applies. Terry, Terry just pointed out um, that you guys might have a question. We will be sending this file out to you in its entirety. And so you will have all of this um, available to you. And I will be updating this from time to time and sending you an update uh, because in that column where it says response, I want you to um, have that information sort of at your fingertips of what's going on and where we are in the process. So you will definitely be getting a copy of this file. I'll be sending all of this information out to you after the webinar today. So have no fear of that. Um, so the last thing for Crystal was someone noticed that the word appropriated um, was not wrapped or actually I think it was wrapped and it needs to be expanded a little bit so it looks better on the report. And so we will be accepting that change as well. Um, and I, also I just want to point out, I'm saying that we will accept the change, but you guys really are voting on this. And so when I send this out to you um, after this webinar, if there's something on this list that I've marked has accepted as a change that you don't agree with, um, you need to send me a response back and let to let us know. If I don't hear from you, then I'm going to assume that everybody agrees that these changes can be made. Um, for dashboard on B0043, the dashboard for the turnover, that was basically the turnover dashboard. Um, Someone noticed that the pie charts have numbers except for one, separations by ethnicity, and they would like us to put the numbers, I think this is the, ho the hover over or the mouse over capability, and they would like us to make sure that the numbers are embedded in that pie chart. Um, we're going to accept that as a change. However, I think there might have been some concern about the way the pie slices um, maybe don't, maybe they don't, um, there's too many of them and they're too slender or too thin and maybe that was causing some problems. But we're going to look at trying to get those numbers on those charts because I agree that it's a problem if you don't know, especially on a pie chart, if you don't know what exactly is actually in those slices. So definitely we're going to try to look at that. Um, uh, again, on the turnover, uh, dashboard, uh, someone has asked for an employee count and a position count along with the turnover. Um, we'll accept that. I think we have, uh, I think we have a little chart on that, on that dashboard that does have the employee count, but I don't know that it has the position count. And so we'll, we'll put a little bit more work in that and make sure that that's there for you. Um, 
Someone noticed that when you hovered over the separation of by age range, we uh, forgot to name the series. So it's actually defaulting to series one, and it actually needs to say age range. And that we've got a couple of charts that we need to adjust uh, because of that. And so yeah, that's, that's just an oversight, so we'll take care of that. Um, let me scroll back up. I think I, I want to make sure we're, that we know where we are. Okay. Um, and then on the, um, the 112 dashboard, sorry, I moved my mouse, um, there was quite a bit of questions about, uh, not just on this dashboard, I think on several other reports, there were questions about did the report include temp? Did they not include temp? Um, and so it, it, it really uh, caused some confusion. And we are definitely going to accept as a change um, the, the, I guess, the documentation or the knowledge of what's included and what's not included. Um, that was feedback that we got not just on this report, but on a lot of the reports. And we're trying to evaluate, you know, I've, I've written a little bit more, you know, in my response column. We're saying that we need to provide some documentation on it so that people know what's included in, in the report. And it's very important in a dashboard especially that people understand what the data represents um, because you, you really need to trust that dashboard and re really need, you know, if you're going to use it as a basis for a decision, you really need to know what you're looking at. So we, we are going to accept that as a change. But I think the easy thing to do is to actually just include a document on it so people can reference the document. But I'd like to take it a step further and try to figure out how we can provide that information clearly in the dashboard itself so that there's no question to the person who's viewing the dashboard um, what that data represents. I'm not sure how that will manifest. We'll have to look at it and, and see what kind of objects we can manipulate to provide that kind of insight. But that's definitely something um, that I'm interested in. And we'll, we'll be showing that, that to you as soon as we can get it done. Um, the next item is uh, in, the, in the turnover dashboard, if you remember, we have a who and we have a what tab. Someone has recommended that we rename those tabs OM and PA. Um, we will accept that if that's what you'd like to call them. Um, this is definitely something that I think the pilot group should vote on and, uh, and give me your feedback on that. But if I don't hear back from anybody, then we're going to be changing the who to say PA, and we're going to be changing the what to say OM. Uh, again, on the um, on the pie, on the uh, turnover report on the pie chart, um, there's some color. I guess there's some color changes, or some. Let, like the legend has one color and the chart has a different color or something like that. It's maybe moving around between the charts. And so uh, somebody noticed that. And I think we had noticed that before. I think that's been talked about within the team a couple of times. And we've had some challenges with how to control the darn thing. It's a little wily and uh, a little wily coyote and it wants to do its own thing. So we will, um, we're accepting that as a change and we are uh, we will we'll research and try to figure out how to how to control that better. We definitely agree it's a problem. Um, someone asked um, for a new pie chart with a breakdown by ethnicity with the separation. So I'm not totally sure I understand exactly what um, is being asked for there. Um, but we'll take a look at ethnicity um, and separations and see if we can do something more along those lines. 
whoever asked that question, if you could if you could send me an email and clarify it a little bit better for me, because I didn't really, I'm not sure I totally understand exactly what that is. We're happy to add another chart to the um, turnover dashboard, um, but I, I would really appreciate some clarity on that one. And if anybody else has an opinion, you know, certainly uh, send me a comment on that. So now we're down in the Webby reports, and um, on the B0077, we modeled um, the sectioning capability of Webby, and in order to model that, we just picked a couple things, and, and organization and employee group sections were what we picked, and we have a comment that um, that those are not those are not preferred sections, and that that's not really meaningful to you guys to have that broken down that way. I'm accepting that as a change, and honestly, uh, we don't feel internally here within my team that we should be putting sections at all on any of the Webby reports because by putting the section on it, once you start doing your manipulations to it, it becomes a little unwieldy and confusing. And so sections are something that we just wanted you to know about, and so we chose to put it on that report just as a, a model. But I think just in general, unless somebody has, um, has some other comments on it, I think in general we will be creating our Webby reports um, as basically flat reports and letting you do your manipulation, and if you want to do sections, um, you can you have the control to be able to add your own sections to any of the Webby reports that you'd like to have. So the change that I'm accepting is we're going to actually be removing the section from the 77 report, and it's going to be more of a flat report like the other, like the 149 and some of the other Webby reports that we have where there's no sections embedded in it. Um, so the next, the next question or comment was, please uncompound the application of funds. And of course, it's not marked up here, but anytime we're talking about funds, we all know which report we're talking about, which is the B0149 report. And so we're going to accept that as a change. There are multiple uh, data elements that are available to you. Some are compounded and some are not compounded. Uh, honestly, um, some of you may have heard me say this before. We implemented some of these data elements as they were delivered to us from SAP. And if I had known back in 2007 and 8 what a nightmare compounding was going to be, we would have done things a little differently. Um, we don't like it either. Compounding is not really particularly helpful, um, but it is something we sort of have to live with now. So you, we will take this as a as a change and get that off for you. Um, but it's it's going to require a little a little work on our part. What is compounding? I was just writing that about defining it. Okay, so I'm going to stop because I have a question that just came in, and I said I would take questions at the end, but this is pertinent to this particular uh, item. So the question was, what is compounding? Compounding is um, where you have two data elements that are related to each other, and in order to be sure you're looking at the right set of values, you need to see both together. So when it comes to application of funds, um, you basically have the budget code and then you have, I think it's the controlling area is what the compound feature is. So within this particular controlling area, you have this fund. So SAP in their wisdom said you really cannot look at fund by itself or the application of fund by itself. You have to see it within its controlling area. And so if you have looked at a 149 report, you might have noticed 
sometimes you see something that says NC01 slash, and then it's got the data value that you're actually looking for, which in this case would be application of fund. And that's because application of fund is compounded with the controlling area of NC01, and you can't see application of fund by itself. You have to see them both together. In BEX, what we do to manage this is we put the controlling area actually on the report layout, and we hide it. And as long as it's in that row, it lets this data element separate and become two different entities. In Webby, it's really not behaving that way. So um, it requires a little bit more uh, manipulation. But we can manage it, and, and we're accepting this as a change. There may be others that you may see, because there's, there's several things that are compounded this way. Um, and they've been nothing but, I think, an aggravation. I think, I think the worst part of it, or the worst compound situation that we have, is when you start looking at the, the pay level, the pay group, pay type, and all of that is compounded together so that you, you see that whole string. So I hope that answered the question about what is compounding. All right, on to the next question. Um, so this is a big deal. This question is actually kind of a big deal. Um, the column headings we used in our webby layout, the ones that my team put on the, um, the base report, the, the public report, the webby report, um, we changed the names of the column headers so that they were friendly and readable. But if you drop down the list of available objects, they are not the same necessarily as what's available to you in that drop-down. Um, for example, um, when we have on B0149, we change the title to say position title versus in the drop-down, that data element is actually listed as position hyphen medium text. So what someone has said is they would rather see position hyphen medium text in the column header and have us rename it to say position title. So this is actually a very big deal, um, not from a technology standpoint or whether or not we can do it, but the impact to you is a big, a big question. Is this truly what everybody wants? So I really need you to vote on this one. And actually, at this point, uh, in this webinar, I would like to try a raising of the hand for everybody who wants this. And give Terry a second, because she has to go. She didn't know I was going to ask you to do this, so she has to go look at this. I can't hear you. So remember, you're raising your hand if you want us to accept this. We're giving you a minute to, to find the raising of the hand feature. Right now we have four hands raised. Eight of 41. You're saying you want us to call, so it's not just the position title, we're talking about all of the columns. You want us to leave them what they are in your available objects, even if it's an ugly name.
Nine, nine of 41 have raised their hand. So everybody who's raised your hand, put your hand down. Everybody's hands down. Okay, I just want to make sure that people aren't, you know, ha have the reason they haven't raised their hand is because they 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 don't want this change. So I want to test the opposite way. If you don't want us to make this change, you do not want us to accept this change. Please raise your hand. Seven so far. We've got 41 on the webinar. Nine. If you do not want us to accept this change, raise your hand. Remember, silence means you accept. Eleven. Thirteen. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop us here. I think that um what I'm hearing is there are some folks who would like us to adopt this, and there may be a few more that would that don't prefer it. So I'm going to hold this change. I'm going to hold it, and we will um, perhaps what we'll do just to be sure is maybe we'll model one, maybe we'll create a copy of 149 that has the, um, the sort of the natural column headers and let you look at it and get a little bit more clarity on it. That sounds like it's not necessarily something everybody would want. Would it help? So, so let's do the raising hand thing. Would it help if I gave you a a, a copy of 149. And people are having trouble raising their hands. Okay. Can we help them, Terry? Can you tell them where to go to raise their hand? Go to the top. If you go to the top of your screen and click on participants, then you'll see your name listed. And at the bottom of that, you'll see a little icon that's the hand icon. And that's where you would click to raise your hand. And it's a toggle switch. Clicking again turns your hand off. Right now. So right now, my last question was, would it help if we created a copy of B0149 so that you could see what this might look like if we did accept this change? Would you like to see that? So raise your hand if you'd like to see that.
raise your hand if you'd like us to make a copy so you can see what this might look like before we adopt it across the board. All right, we're at 22, so there's a good, there's a good acceptance of that. So I'm going to put this on hold as far as accepting it as a change to the, um, as far as accepting it as a change to all of our Webby report. But I'm going to um, ask my team to make a copy for you so you can get a look at it. And we'll try to get that out on that January 5th um, change date so that you can look at it then. All right, and then the last thing, so you guys can all put your hands down now. Um, the last thing that I have on the list of changes was um, the help folder. So I think that um, this came up as a question, and we talked about it in one of the training rooms on one of the days, and I'm not sure we shared this with everybody, so I just um, do want to go over this with, with everybody. We are going to be creating a new folder um, in the Bob J portal itself or the Bob J system itself under Launchpad, under that public uh, folder space. It's going to be named with an underscore help. And we're doing it that way so it will force it to sort to the top of your, of your folder list. And inside of that folder, we are going to put all of our training materials, all of our tutorials, um, any uh, frequently asked questions. Um, I know I talked to a few folks about our idea of recording like mini um, videos of how to do specific tasks with perhaps Webby. Anything that we, we come across that we think would be helpful to you, we're going to place in that help folder. And it will be right there on the Launchpad um, uh, system and available to you. So we hope that'll make it um, easy for you to access, um, easy for you to find. One thing that's nice about it is that your search will also search this help folder. So you'll be able to find documents that might be related to the report, um, tie it all together that way. So that's the other change. I'm going to go ahead and expand this list back out. I want to make sure I save it because I put that one item on hold. Um, but just to go over this document again, because I'm going to send it out to you and I want you to understand how it's organized. I have type, I have the question, and then I have our initial response. So um, you might want to take a minute once I send this out to look through this response column because some of these um, we've already kind of got a little bit of an answer for, um, but I didn't want to try to read all of this over this webinar to you. If you have any questions later about it, though, as you're going through it, you can definitely shoot me an email, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have through email as well. Okay. So that's the end of that. Now, I'm not going to switch back to the presentation just yet, um, because my next slide on that presentation is um, some interesting dashboards that I wanted to present to you. And so I need to be out in this view or out in this mode anyway. So I'm just going to go here. Um, I have a couple of dashboard samples that I want to show you. I want to share them with you. They are not dashboards that we have done. These are dashboards that I found um, by using Google and looking for examples of things other people had done. And so I wanted to share these with you because I want you to have some ideas and I'm hoping to spark some, some creativity and some thoughts 
um, and maybe get us some inspiration on some things that we should think about when we are trying to develop our dashboards. So the first one is uh, one that I found on SAP's website. A company had put this together. And I'm going to go ahead and click on it. I hope that you can see it. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger. I don't know if it'll help. I go the wrong way. All right, that's not helping. Is it? Hopefully, you guys can see it. It's a little busy. It's a little shocking when you first look at it. So this is an HR dashboard that was developed by a particular company. Um, it's got a huge amount of information in it, and it takes a second for your eyes to adjust to it and sort of take it in. Um, I'm going to try to walk us through it just a little bit. Um, at the top, they have a, a little gauge that's talking about their employee engagement. And it's basically measuring how engaged their employees are. In the middle, they're representing their different divisions with a little graphic. Um, if I were to click on one of these, it's changing which division I'm looking at. Can you see that it's changing this? And every time I click on one of these graphics, I'm noticing sort of out of the peripheral of my eye that my charts are changing a little bit. So all of these charts are tied to this central control at the top. I have a key job turnover gauge. I have an a employee count. Basically, this is the number of employees. If I go to the beginning here, I can see how many employees total. And it's over a series of years. As I go down through the dashboard, I've got these sections. And the first section is key talent process processes and supply resources. Now this is something that would mean something um, to this particular company. Supply resources would be something they would be looking at. But inside of that they're measuring their open positions. And they have these little uh, indicators to indicate where they are now in relation to where they have been. So when I'm looking at this and it says it's yellow and it's and it's got a red downward uh, arrow. What it means is I'm not I'm I'm not going I'm not less, but I am not in a forward movement, and it's trending down. So the down arrow is saying I'm trending down. So you can be I'm looking across here. You can be in a yellow state, meaning that I'm sort of flat, but trending up. So that's the that's the information this dashboard is giving you. So, and it's giving me the actual percentage of open positions, which would be vacant positions. So if I click on this, this is doing that drill through technique that I was telling you about. And now it's going to give me more information about my open position. Um, and as you can see, there's some good information here. And it's giving me that information across a time frame. It's giving me that information across the different um, the different uh, divisions it looks like to me here. Okay. So I will send you the link to this, so don't worry about trying to understand or look at every bit of this right now. I will send you this link so you can look at it yourself. Um, but this is an example of how you can put a lot of information, a lot of useful, meaningful information together in one screen. And like I said, I know this kind of hurts your eyes at first because it's, it's almost too much. And I'm not sure we want to do anything quite like this. But it is, um, it is a very, very powerful dashboard. If, if we had a dashboard like this, um, then you'd have, you'd have a lot of information here available to you at one, at one time. 
The next dashboard that I want to show you is actually a real dashboard from the state of Pennsylvania. So the state of Pennsylvania is sort of, um, uh, they're doing a lot of things. They're doing a lot of the same things that we're doing. They implemented SAP, I think, a few years ahead of us. And they have uh, a lot of the same challenges. They have a lot of the same problems. And they have implemented business objects. And they are using um, the dashboard tool and business objects to do dashboards. So this is, uh, this is one that they have put together that they are posting externally. So I'm sure they have others that are internal facing. But this is an external dashboard. And so they have got, their first screen has got some different buttons that you can push. So I'm just going to push this first one. And this is an example of a drill through. They're using that first dashboard as a menuing dashboard, and it drills through to a different dashboard behind the scenes. So here's a little chart. They start out with total employment, part-time and full-time, salary, and wage employee. So they've broken down their salary versus wage employees by year. And they have union management status. I don't know that we have that. Um, they have employment by job categories. I think this is interesting. We have something very similar that we could do. I think we actually did this as part of our pilot, something similar to this. Um, top employee classification. So they've got some different, um, some different options here. Um, this is just another way to get back to that initial screen. So I'm going to click on agency complements. Um, I'm not familiar with the terminology of agency complements, so I'm not really sure what they mean by that. But basically, they've got some agency stats in here. And I know this is really hard to read. At least it is on my overhead. I hope it's better or easier for you to read at your desk. If it's not, don't worry, because I will send you the link to this, and you can look at it yourself, and it'll be better if you're not looking at it through the webinar software. Um, but basically, they have employment by agency, so they've got their agencies broken down, and they've got civil service, non-civil service. So you can see that's a little different. We don't really. Yeah, we don't really do it quite like that, but um, this is just a, a concept that I wanted to share with you of things that we might do. Now, this I thought was very interesting. I kind of like the way they laid this chart out, where they actually have, by their agencies, they have the number of separations and the number of hires. And so you see they've lost, you know, down here, I think is that transportation, I can barely read it. They've lost 681, but they've gained 361. So ideally, you'd want to see these two sides the same. If they lost them, they gained them. Um, so I think this is actually a, a kind of an interesting um, chart. So I just wanted to share with you um, some ideas. You can look through this. Um, the leave usage chart, I think, is interesting as well. Um, I think this is very interesting. Uh, they're saying average leave, leave usage in days by agency, and they're breaking it down by the leave type. So each one of these bars has different color sections. Overall, this agency has used 43 days, or their, their employees are using 43 days, but it's broken down into these different types. Sick leave, personal leave, holiday. Other. I think this is a very interesting chart. Um, and like I said, this is an external facing um, dashboard. So you can see that they are protecting people's personal information. You really can't get into any kind of detail here. But this is, these are some very interesting stats that are available now to the public, um, to the citizens of Pennsylvania, to know what's going on with their state government employment practices. All right, um, with that, this is pretty much the end of 
uh, what I wanted to cover today. And so um, we talked about training, we talked about the interest in dashboards. So now we're down into the question and answer session. Um, I don't know if you guys had any questions. Uh, Terry, I've answered and responded to the majority of them. Because oh, I've answered and responded to the majority of them, but there were three I wanted to pull out um, that came up. One was the um, were, was the PowerPoint presentation going to be sent out to all participants? And yes, everybody will get um, a copy of the PowerPoint as well as the spreadsheet. Um, and the links to the and dashboard. the links to all the dashboards. So everything that's gone over in the webinar today, we will be sending out to you via email as a part of that. Um, the dates for the webinars coming up, December 29th, January 14th, and January 28th are included in the slide presentation. But we will also pull those out, um, and you should go ahead and be receiving um, registration information on that soon. Um, first part of uh, next week, maybe Monday, and then you can go ahead and get registered for all of those. So you've got them on your calendar as a part of that as well. And then we had um, a couple things that came up in the Q&A um, concerning the spreadsheets. And as Karen said um, just a minute ago, we will be sending out the spreadsheet to you with some instructions and some deadlines on getting feedback to us. Um, so that everybody's on the same page. Um, several people said they'd like to be able to pull up the reports, take a look at what the, ex what the requested changes were before giving a yes or no on that. So we'll send that out with some deadlines marked around that, maybe some prioritization right. um, on getting that feedback to us right. so you don't have to do everything at one time right. on that part of it. Right. We will, um, there, were, there were a couple of, uh, things that we already intended to change um, that we talked about. I think in all the, all the different training sessions, it did come up. Uh, the, the main thing, though, that we're working on right now is we're trying to get attributes back on to the Webby reports for you. So that, cha that change really didn't, it didn't come up on the spreadsheet. It's not part of the list. But we are um, we're working on that change. So that's definitely something that's, that's my main target for the January 5th. Uh, change window is to get those attributes back on the Webby report. Um, the remainder of those changes, uh, depending on your feedback, we, we may or may not make that window. Over here. On the um, B0149, is that only Crystal or is that not Crystal and Webby? We have, so B149 is a Webby report. We have a crystal version of 149-1, I believe. I don't think that we Our have. Our question is, we are not adding new reports to the pilot, but can a Webby be added for a report that is in crystal, specifically the B0149-1? Yes. So the, so the question, I don't know if you guys heard that question. Sherry, say it again into the phone over here really loud. Um, the question is, we are not adding new reports to the pilot, but can a Webby be added for a report that is in crystal, specifically the B0149-1? And the answer is yes. If we have a report that is in the pilot already, regardless of its existing format, and you want to see it in a different format, yes, we can do that. We can also create new reports based on what the existing report looks like. So for instance, if you guys remember my little challenge um, at the end of your training on, on Webby, where we did a job report, an average salary, that kind of thing. If you, if you can get the report out of an existing report, we can go ahead and model that as well. And we can model it in whatever format you want. As long as, the, the main thing is, as long as the data is available to you in one of those reports, if it's there, we can build a new report based on it. But what we can't do is add new data that wasn't already published to business objects. Are there any other questions? So remember, if you're asking for a report change or a new report and it fits within 
what's acceptable as far as the change for, for the pilot. All you have to do is send an email to Best Shared Services with the subject line of Bob J and type in there what you would like to have and um, we can add it. I think that, um, I don't think anybody would complain about a new report. I think that people might be concerned if you want to change an existing report. So if it's a new report, we'll probably just go ahead and do it. We'll let you know what we're doing though. Um, but if it's a change, we, we, we do want to get some acceptance on a change. Um, another thing that just came up is I want to remind you that if you have created something that you think is very interesting and would be of interest to others, please send me um, an email or send me a best ticket, uh, send me something uh, about it so I can go look at it. And if you've got something that you'd like to share, uh, we would be happy to pick that report up and share it with everyone. Um, you guys all are sort of in the same boat in your, in your different agencies and you may have uh, some ways of solving some problems that would be beneficial to others. So please do share your ideas and let us um, publish that for everybody else's use as well. Are there any other questions? It looks like there's no more questions. Um, thank you guys so much for calling in today and participating with us. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, a wonderful Christmas holiday. And I look forward to uh, talking to you again real soon on the changes that are coming through and our experiences with the business object system. Thank you.